All right, I'm gonna start by performing a safe start. My seatbelt is on, my parking brake is engaged, and my vehicle is in neutral. I'm gonna start the truck. I'm gonna listen for any unusual noises and watch for warning lights on the dash. I don't hear any unusual noises and there's no warning lights on the dash. I'm gonna start by doing an applied air leakage test. The front and rear tank are in normal operating range at about 125 PSI on each. If the truck is not at, if the tanks are not at normal operating range, give the truck a minute to build up pressure in the tanks to get to normal operating range. But we're already here, so I'm gonna go ahead and start the applied air leak test. So to do that, I'm gonna turn the truck off. I'm going to release the parking brake. I'm going to firmly apply the service brake all the way down. Let the needle settle. The front and rear tank are both at 110 PSI. So I'm going to start the applied air leakage test. I'm gonna wait, watch the tanks for one minute with the service brake all the way to the floor. And in one minute, the tanks cannot lose more than three PSI. So we'll pretend a minute has passed. Neither the front or the rear tank lost any air pressure. I know that because the needle did not move. So they did not lose more than three PSI in one minute. The applied air leak test is complete. Now I'm going to perform the low air pressure warning test. The low air pressure warning should activate between 55 and 75 PSI. To do that, I'm gonna apply and release the service brake to deplete the pressure. And the low air pressure warning light and alarm have activated. I see the light, I hear the alarm. The front tank is at 60 PSI, the rear tank is at 60 PSI, which is between 55 and 75 PSI. So I know the low air pressure warning is passed. Next, I'm gonna test the spring brake pop out. The spring brake should pop out between 20 and 45 PSI. So I'm gonna continue to deplete the air pressure in the tanks. The spring brake popped out at 30 PSI in the front, 30 PSI in the rear, which is between 20 and 45 PSI. So I know the spring brake pop out test is passed. Next, I'm going to do the air governor cut out test. The air governor should cut out before the pressure in both tanks reaches 140 PSI. So to do that, I'm gonna turn the truck on. I'm gonna rev the engine to help the pressure build up more quickly. And before you turn the truck on again, you should also reconfirm that the parking brake is on, it popped out, and you should also make sure the truck is in neutral again. So we see the front tank there has built up first, the rear tank's coming along. And at about 100 PSI in both tanks, I'm gonna stop revving the engine so I can find the exact pressure at which the air governor cuts out. So we're watching for the needle to stop moving. That's when we stop moving up and that's how we will know the air governor has cut out. All right, the needles for the pressure gauge on both the front and rear have stopped moving up. 
That's how we know the air governor has cut out. And that cutout happened at 130 PSI, which is less than 140 PSI. So we know the air governor cut out test is passed. Next, we're gonna test the air governor cut in. The air governor should cut in no lower than 100 PSI. So to do that, we're gonna stab the brake all the way to the floor one time. We're gonna watch both needles are at 110. We're gonna watch to see if they start rising. And the needles are rising, so we know the air governor cut in at 110 PSI, which is not lower than 100 PSI. So the air governor cut in test is complete. Next, we're going to test the parking brake. We're gonna to need to remove the wheel chocks for this test and then get back into the cab. Again, confirm that the parking brake is on. Put the vehicle into drive. Give it a little bit of gas. And we do not move forward, so we know the parking brake holds the vehicle. The parking brake test is passed. Finally, we're gonna test the service brake. We're going to release the parking brake, put the vehicle into drive, Allow the vehicle to go forward and firmly apply the service brake. The vehicle did not pull side to side. There's no warning lights on the dash. We know the service brake is functioning properly. That concludes the air brakes.